All right, Doug. Yeah. Doug, uh, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? I was born in the Bay Area. We moved around a lot. We moved to Reno, Tulsa, Santa Maria, Northern Kentucky. And Northern Kentucky is where I went to high school. And then I, a couple years <clears throat> after high school, I did some college, went to Northern Kentucky University, went to um, Brigham Young University and Utah Valley University and Palomar College. Palomar was where I, uh, I decided that college wasn't for me. Like I, I got the, I got the social experience from it and I liked meeting new people and talking to new people and stuff, but the class and structure of it all was, I just wasn't feeling it. And I was like, I'm going to go out in the real world, <laughs> make some money and then just pave my own path. And well, now I'm in a homeless shelter. <laughs> what, uh, what was your childhood like? With your parents? It was, it was okay. Like, we watched The Simpsons every Sunday night. Like, that was our church, you know? Like, if, if we weren't, uh, if we weren't together, like, the rest of the week, Sunday nights we'd get together, and, like, uh, every night before it started, my mom would, like, yell around the house, like, you're gonna miss the couch. Kids, you're gonna miss the couch. Because the couch gag at the beginning, you know? Right. You gotta... And, um, so your childhood was fairly good. It sounds like it was all right. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we didn't have, um, over our means like money wise. And, <clears throat> but my parents jobs like l allowed them to move us around just kind of wherever. And, my dad would like learn everything there was to learn at one job and then he'd get bored and then he's like, well, let's move to a bigger market so then I can learn more. And so, yeah, we moved around a lot. I get the question like, were you an army brat or uh, a lot, but nope, just, uh, he's a TV news producer and my mom's a nurse, so. Times where we maybe would have needed to go to the doctor, my mom was there to patch us up and stuff, but brother, younger sisters, and then, yeah, after school and like a bunch of jobs. I've had, I've had like 38, 39 jobs and I'm 37. Wow. And so, and some of those jobs I kept for over a year. Like the movie theater, that job was fucking awesome. Regal Cinemas. <laughs> but then they got bought out by some company called Danbury Cinemas. And the way they got that name was, there's a guy named Dan and a guy named Barry. And they became business partners and we were like, let's start a movie theater. So uh, after you were out of school, yeah. do you have relationships, marriage, kids, anything like that? Yeah, when I was in, living in San Diego County, which is where I went to Palomar College, um, I met someone and we dated and then we got engaged and then we got married and it kind of felt like it was all on a track, you know, like, uh, and so we got married and it just wasn't the best for both of us. And so we went to like marriage counseling and stuff and a couple months after that called it and then divorced and then i was living with some roommates i picked up this piano off craigslist uh, yamaha cp70 it's like this electric acoustic traveling touring piano and if the rumor is true the person i got it from got it from someone who got it directly from Eddie Money. And I'm like, that's pretty cool. Uh, there's a couple keys missing. There's a C missing and a D missing. And those are my initials flipped DC. I'm like, that's also kind of cool. 
I got to get those strings replaced at some point because dancing around those keys. Um... So, so today you're down here on Skid Row. Uh huh. So, so today you're down here on Skid Row. Yeah. How long I, li you been? How I live long? in a homeless shelter. How long you been here? Um, about three or four months. And um, <clears throat> I ended up here because there was one night where I parked my van and I like something was guiding me that night and I, I had smoked some weed laced with meth and, um, and I was just on one. Like I, I kept, I felt like I was being guided by voices and just like walking and walking and walking on this journey to where the destination was, I don't know. And then I ended up in front of this spot and I was like meditating and and it was awesome. And I felt like I was talking to like everyone in the entire universe <laughs> at one point. And, and I was like, this is beautiful. This is amazing. And then after that, uh, I still felt like I was being guided and I was walking and I was so fucking tired. I have chronic Lyme disease, so I'm really weak all the time. Like I, I'm 37, but I feel like on the inside, I feel like I'm like 85. So there's like a lot of, or, you know, 105. I don't know, there's a lot of strong 85 year olds out there, but uh, just feel really weak. And I'm just walking and walking. And then um, I saw this fire and there was just kind of people walking around and didn't seem like much of an issue. And then there was this like little ramp right in front of the fire, like someone had built it from the from a high school shop class that like looked like a shoddily put together ramp, but it was right in front of the fire and something, uh, excuse me, something kept telling me, you know what would be a really cool way to end this day? If I could jump over that fire right there. And the fire was like maybe about this high and I, I had the presence of mind to be like, well, I'm not going to try and jump over the middle of the fire because then I'll definitely catch on fire. But I could jump over the side of this fire and shit if I was wrong. These are the skin grafts. Ouch. From when I was in the hospital, after I left everything, left the van and like, um, this is where they like cut the skin to make the skin grafts for the rest of my legs and whoo goes all the way down to my toes but oh. it was it was wild there was emts there immediately and they were like putting me out and they were like cutting my clothes off to make sure i didn't have any other burns and and i was in the the emt ambulance and i Apparently got driven to Cedar sinai Hospital that day, but I don't have any recollection of that. I just remember waking up in a different hospital and I had these bandages all over my legs and they were like, we had to put bandages on the parts of you that basically wouldn't go out, wouldn't stop bleeding, and we're going to have to do skin grafts and we're going to need your signature. And I'm like, well, Shit, if I won't stop bleeding, if that's the only way, then hopefully, hopefully that'll do it. And it's healing, but it's scarred, you know, like I'm. This was recently. This was pretty recent. This was in the last uh, four or five months. Oh, wow. Yeah. And um, I'm not going to do that again. Hmm. Don't play with fire, everyone. So what? So what, what are your drugs typically? You get, you get burned. What do you, um, what do you use most often? Uh, I, I, I smoke weed a lot. Like that can be like a day-to-day -day thing. And then I really, really love shrooms. Like the first time I had magic mushrooms, ooh, it was incredible. There's three, friend, three friends. We were all together. We were hanging out, but we were all on different levels of the high. So one friend was like, on the ground and just kind of like covering themselves up with a blanket and just kind of doing living in their own uh high and then one friend was like up and down and like back and forth from their room and like 
at one point they took their shirt off and they, but while they were in their room and then they came back out to the place where we were all hanging out and me and my other friend who was on the floor were laughing and he was like you guys laughing at me <laughs> and we were like no i mean we just think it's funny because we were in here and all this you had a shirt on and then all of a sudden you didn't and like that was just kind of funny um but I, if i had if i had the money to do mushrooms every day i probably wouldn't do it every day but every week hmm that would be amazing i like i saw the i saw the ceiling like billowing as if it was a layer of reality and i stood on this chair and i was like i know the ceiling is solid but i see that it's moving like water and it looks like i could put my hand through it if i tried and i know that i couldn't but the fact that it looks like that is really fucking cool and there was this poster on the wall i used to host this comedy show out of the duplex duplex comedy suplex and i like uh people have talked about all the time when i heard about mushroom experiences like the walls looked wet like every all the paint looked wet and everything and i saw some of the some of the ink on the poster and it looked like it was kind of running a little bit and i was like huh maybe when we're on mushrooms we can see gravity in motion and i was like that's fucking cool and people say don't look in the mirror when you're on mushrooms i was looking in the mirror for a minute and then i was like oh shit okay i got to look away from this mirror i didn't see anything crazy or anything but i was like oh okay like through the looking glass like there's another <laughs> there's another me on this on the other side of this glass and i was just like all right i'm not going to look in the mirror anymore so so you enjoy mushrooms for their hallucinogenic Qualms, yeah. right? That's, yeah. that's what you get off on it. Yeah. And like, because seeing shit is cool as long as you can be like, I know this is a trip. Like I went into it as an adult. And so I was just like, all right, this is going to be what it's going to be. And I'll figure it out along the way and talk to my friends while we're doing it. And all of a sudden I had all, started having all these ideas. And I started tweeting them. But I didn't tweet that I was on mushrooms. I was just like... <clears throat> Oh, you know it would be such a cool idea for a superhero team. Oh, it's these guys and it's going to be called this. And all we need is money to make it happen. Give us your money. <laughs> and no one did. But um those ideas are still still up here. I'm like those 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 characters could still become comic book characters at some point. So the the idea of maybe applying yourself towards some goals that you may have had or something like that just kind of gets yeah thrown by the wayside well you, uh i don't I mean, know because if, if you're going to be high on mushrooms you're probably not going to be able to do much <laughs> else well so. i did get all those tweets out there which was pretty cool and i i think i have them downloaded somewhere and i could turn that into something to make a more cogent idea of like what the comic book will be um but I got a lot of I've been, uh man as of creative projects I've got a lot of them and like some of them I'm like all right table that for now but I got to do this right now or like okay I'm going to start editing this and like get this together and make it more reasonable like scripts and like drawings like I started I wrote this script for a cartoon well I was just like super fucking high it was weed but i was i was just like whoa that would be crazy that would be crazy do, 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 do. and then all of a sudden i had a script and i was like oh shit okay okay a cartoon uh i don't know how to animate i guess i'll have to learn how to <laughs> learn how to animate like i i tried to show it to a friend of mine and they came up with a couple character designs and and the character designs that i came up with are different than the ones that they came up with but their designs are way better than mine cuz they like they've they've worked in animation a little bit and i'm just like all right well shoot maybe i could have made that work if i wasn't like oh, i don't know it's not how i imagined it but getting together 
getting anyone together for a creative project is a struggle because at the beginning of the creative project, you're like, well, I have work or, well, I don't have work, so I need to try and find work because this isn't paying right now. It could pay later. And you just have to put a lot of trust in yourself and a lot of trust in who you're working with to make sure that you can get the job done. And sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. So for my, my belief is that everything we do, there's a, there's a negative and a positive aspect to it. Yeah. So doing mushrooms, you, you like the little ride you go on, right? Yeah. What, what are the negative? The negative, um, you know, the, the only negative I would say is if you don't eat it paired with something else that can like cover up the taste, cause they're shit, like it's shit shrooms, you know, like you're, you're eating shrooms that were grown in shit. So there's like shit molecules in there or something. And it's like cow shit. And like, that's what makes it work. And if you just eat it without anything else, you're going to taste that shit taste in your mouth for sh I was going to say shit <laughs> for a while, even brushing your teeth. And then your toothbrush is going to smell like it. Pair it with peanut butter, maybe cook it down, saute it with something, um, make it part of a meal. But that's the only negative I could see from mushrooms. Like I, I bet, I bet though, like if you're doing them every day, then your, your, your perception of reality might shift a little bit where you're like, is this just rooms or is this really happening? I suspect there's something else involved in doing a, a hallucinogenic that, especially if you do it regularly, yeah. that you'll, you'll pay some kind of price. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not like, saying you're gonna have brain damage. I'm not saying anything like that. I'm just saying it might your, ability, your ability to apply yourself towards a goal might yeah. be it might It impaired. might strike a different pathway in your brain. But you'll where... also come up with some really great creative ideas. <laughs> yeah. So you got a trade off <laughs> yeah. and you got to wear both of those. Yeah. You got the trade off of like, all right, I'll do this occasionally, maybe not every day, but when I do it, I'm probably going to get some ideas and I'm going to be ready for them and I'm going to write them down or tweet them out or post a blog or make a video and whew, get those ideas out there. Because while, while I was thinking of these characters for this comic book, I was like, I can see, I can like see the pages turning and I can see the panels and stuff and I can see it all lining up and how this character would maybe meet that character and like, this would happen over here and uh but since i didn't have the presence of mind to like write any of it down i was like well twitter if that's an open forum maybe people will respond to it i think i got a couple likes on some of them but nothing big nothing viral <laughs> nothing where you see those tweets and you're like sixty-seven thousand likes are there that many people on twitter tonight are there that many people on earth <laughs> Doug, what would you say is the most important thing you've learned in your life? Um, I'll tell you what. Gratitude leads to growth. Positivity and patience will get you a really long way. And love and self-love. Like, very important lessons that I've learned through a lot of trial and error. A lot of uh, negativity. I used to have a lot of negative shit on my Twitter. And I, like, d not... I, I was trying to do the thing where you just delete all the tweets and like have still have all the followers and following. And what I accidentally did was I deleted the whole entire account. So everyone who I was connected to was like, oh, well, fuck me then, I guess. And I'm like, no, I didn't. I was just trying to get rid of the tweets. Ugh, because there was just like negativity on there where like there's this one tweet that I got that got around a thousand likes. And when that was happening, I was like, oh shit, this is something negative though. <laughs> this is something negative though. I don't want it to like blow up. Like, uh... But then yeah, later on I had the presence of mind to log back into the Twitter and just be like, all right, I'm starting fresh, ground zero. Like here's a new account, gratitude, growth, positivity, patience, and love. And occasionally I'll still yell on there, but it's like, a little more vague or just uh, getting my feelings out. But yeah, man, like talking about shrooms again. <laughs> the, the, when, when we were all coming down off of the high, 
I was like, damn, I don't know if I could do this every day, but every week or maybe even like once a month and just double whatever I did that day. The experience is beautiful. It's like, uh, I mean, and I, I guess it depends on where you get it and who you're with and what your circumstances are. Like I've heard to not do them if you're in, in a rough place, but to do them if you're with someone you trust or people you trust and like friends and good vibes, maybe have weed there on the side that you're smoking while the, while the shrooms are doing their work. And whew, it's, it's something else, man. I, <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. Of course. Thanks for having me. Good luck, awesome. with, uh, good luck with getting off, uh, off the skid row. Thanks. I, I, oh, can I plug a couple things real nope. quick? Nope. nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do that.